Today's the day that Brutus goes to the butcher. We're gonna miss him, but we're gonna be happy to have the meat in the freezer, especially with all the craziness going on in the world right now. So, hey buddy, there you go. Just let me scratch your chin. You've been a good boy. We're gonna get him loaded up in the trailer. Well, I guess caught first. It's been a while since I've haltered him. So it's, we'll see if he lets me halter him and lead him easily. It's been a while since I've haltered and led him, but he was halter trained as a calf and we worked with him extensively for a long while and he was also trailer trained. So we'll see, we're gonna do our best. This might work, this might be total chaos, we'll see. Be good for me, Brutus. Come on, baby. Oh, that's my good gentle boy. Hi, Axel. Alfalfa cubes here. What, buddy? What is that ant? Let me see. I think that's just a tree ant. Oh, no. That might be something else. What is that? That's it? interesting looking. I don't know what that is. Don't touch it, though. Stay away from it, because I don't know what that is. It's not an ant, it's not an ant killer, or a cow killer. It's not a cow killer. I don't know I what that was. Wash it. No, don't, just leave it alone. All right, so I got some alfalfa cubes for Brutus. Sending Brutus off is kind of a big deal to us. Um, I mean, this isn't the first time we've raised up a steer. Um, we had Big Mac. Uh, the year before last that we sent off and I mean yeah we kind of missed him but it was different for him because we got him when he was already six months old and I mean we never really got attached to him whereas with Brutus he was one of he was one of two our first cows we ever had and while I did my best to not get too attached to him because we knew he was not going to be staying. There's still that kind of like feeling of something's going to be missing. Like I am going to be sad to see him go. He's a very sweet steer and I do appreciate everything he is doing for us right now, honestly. And some people might be like, why didn't you just let him live out your li his life? Well, we need food. We need to eat. And we got him with the purpose of raising him humanely and allowing him to enjoy his life as a cow longer than he would have and sending him off in a peaceful way. So he's going today. They'll, they're gonna, um, once they dispatch him, dress him, clean him up, he's gonna hang for 21 days. That's the standard process for hanging uh, beef. And then they're gonna uh, finish him up, process, process the meat up and then deliver it to us. And I personally feel like as someone who 
who likes to eat meat, I feel like this is, this is the right thing to do for us. Now it's not for everyone, but I feel that as someone who loves meat, I feel like it's better for us to raise it humanely, knowing that it lived a good life and then giving it that respect of a peaceful passing. Whereas when you go to the grocery store and you just buy meat, you're so emotionally disconnected from that food. That food do doesn't have any more value than the price tag on it. Whereas whenever we process Brutus, who we've lovingly raised up with the intention of consuming him down the road, that meat has a greater weight and value to it, if that makes sense. That's honestly, that's probably the best way that I can explain it. And as far as our mentality and approach to raising our, the animals that we intend to consume, that's kind of the approach that we take with it. Wellington, who was born last year, will be the one who, he'll grow up for two and a half years, and then he will get processed as well. I'm personally kind of excited to see how things go for Wellington, because our bull Axel here, he, um, he has grass-fed genetics, which is what we wanted. We want that low maintenance, high convertibility on grass. And we still give them some supplemental grain, but that, that feed conversion is a lot, it's a lot better than uh, cows that have been bred to be sustained on grain. So Wellington is out of Annabelle, who is just your standard miniature jersey, but Axel, who is that grass-fed genetics, I'm hoping, to, I'm curious to see how he does um, in the long run, because he could actually grow out really nicely on grass. He's, he's got, he ain't got no care in the world, look at him. He's just chewing away at the cud. And, and I mean like, that's just, that's what his intention, his goal, his plan is. So he'll be, let's see, it's 2021. So he'll be 20, the end of 2022. And then Annabelle's calf will be 2023, 2024. And um, yeah, so curious to see we'll see how much because uh, Brutus is a standard size jersey he's well I guess he would be like a mid-sized jersey he's not like huge but he's not small Axel's pretty Axel's pretty he's not like a mini but he's not like a standard I think he I think he actually fell somewhere in the ballpark of 46 to 47 inches at the hip I got I I never measured him I need to measure him can I measure you bud he's pretty chill let me go measure him I'm not doing anything suspicious. I'm just measuring you at the hip, bud. Can I, can I please? Can you stand? Oh. Just gonna measure you here, buddy. That's a good boy. Alright. Two inches shy of four feet. So four feet is 48 inches. It's 46 inches. 46 inches is the hip. I think his parents were between 47 and 48 inches at the hip. So he's 46 inches at the hip, which is great, which is totally possible because he is out of uh, a Misty. His bloodlines are Misty Morning, which they are a miniature Jersey farm. So that's not surprising that he did come out. So he's 46 inches at the hip. That's awesome. So he's not quite standard Jersey. He's more mid-sized Jersey. And then Annabelle's mini. So Wellington and Annabelle's newest bull calf will be a mid-size miniature cow. We'll see, I'm excited. Good boy, Axel. Oh, push him along, tell him who's boss. <laughs> so, we dropped Brutus off at the uh, butcher's. And I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of tough. It was, it was sad, it was kind of bittersweet. We're happy because we're gonna have meat, but we are gonna miss him on the property. Leon and I, we unloaded him out of the trailer and we got to spend a little bit more time with him, gave him our goodbyes, and uh, just gave him one good last chin scratch. And I mean, that's all you really can do. Just, we thanked him, of course, for everything. It was, it was, it was nice to have him around. We're sad to see him go, but it's all part of just trying to raise food uh, responsibly and ethically and just trying to give our family the best we can. It's not for everyone, but I feel for us, it's our own personal responsibility as people who like to eat meat. Like I feel like that's the right thing for us to do is to 
take that responsibility and not just consume meat blindly buying at the grocery store, which I'm not hating on people who do that. Like, this is not for everyone. But for us personally, this is the route I would prefer to take. I would prefer to raise our own animals for consumption, give them the best life that we possibly can personally, and then let them go and know that they, let them know, let them know where that food came from, know, and it has more value to us. So that's kind of, kind of the approach that we're taking to it. It's not always easy, but I feel that it's it's rewarding in the end. I feel like it's worth it in the end. Got a very unhappy Splash Americana, one of our breeders. We are uh, back now actually getting our flock NPIP certified with the uh, Department of Agriculture. So really exciting because what does the NPIP certification mean? Basically what it is is they test our flock for diseases and they certify that we have a disease-free flock. So we will be able to sell hatching eggs, chicks, and ship them uh, across the, across the state lines. So um, my sister who lives in Minnesota who has been wanting hatching eggs for her friends, I can ship her some hatching eggs. And if any of our subscribers would like some, maybe we can sell you guys some hatching eggs as well if you're interested. I know ma'am, I know, I know. You're just like so, uh, I grabbed you out of the nesting box because you were, you were done laying and she's, she's verbally, she's protesting right now. She's, she's verbally protesting. I know mama, it's okay. I know, you're fine. I got you, baby. <laughs> so I thought it'd be really cool to share with you guys um, kind of the process, what they're doing right now. They're getting set up. Um, but I wanted to kind of bring some awareness to it because not a lot of people know about the NPIP certification. And I don't know about other states, but I know that in Florida, it is a free program, which I feel would be beneficial to everyone just to keep uh, disease uh, under control and uh, prevent spread of disease as well. So you guys are you guys are gonna do a swab right. and a blood test, and you said the swab is pretty instantaneous. Or no, the blood the test blood is test. instantaneous. Correct. Yeah. So what exactly are you guys testing for? The blood test is pylorum typhoid, which is a type of salmonella, and then the swabs are avian influenza. Okay. So this the the typhoid that's is that the beast salmonella that's most commonly known for in the united states or is that something else well it's what could affect your flock yeah like and it can be like transferred to your eggs and stuff yeah because yeah. i know we're always like careful when you're handling eggs and chicken salmonella yeah. salmonella right yeah they're shoe covers yeah that, that that's for biosecurity that prevents them from bringing anything that might be on our farm on site yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah, because yeah. whenever we're done, we'll take them off and we throw them away so that we don't, and then we can wear our regular shoes and they haven't been on the ground here or anywhere else. Mm-hmm. They don't carry any contaminants off site. So angry at me, I know. My oh, goodness, I don't know if you guys can see it. Look at her eyes. She has the most, oh, are you gonna focus? Can we focus? There we go, easy. Look at her eyes. She's got these really pretty, look at her. Can you, can you guys see her eyes? She's got these like yellow and orange flecks in her eyes. It's absolutely gorgeous. I know, pretty girl. I know. All right, ma'am. You're fine. You're fine. gonna take the swab the swab is what gets sent off for testing it's the blood test that's very quick all right and if you want it you can just set her down on the ground we put little pieces of napkin under their wings and we poked them just to help it clot so there okay. might be little paper towels that we need to pick up that's after. fine that's fine all right let's get another one so you can give her some if you want to get another one just yeah like there we go here we go all right, good daddy, good boy. We got our rooster right here, Mr. Handsome Man. Oh, look at you. Well, he's like, you gonna say hi? Say hi to everyone. There you go, handsome boy. Good girl. Easy boy. <clears throat> Easy. 
easy girl. <laughs> Block testing is done. Positive news, we're halfway to certification. All the blood tests came back negative. So as far as the blood tests go, we are good. Just waiting for that swab sample test to come back. And once that comes back negative, we're certified. We are certified NPIP, which is exciting. There are places that you can get it and it'll charge you, but you can go through the Department of Agriculture and you can actually get it covered so and i'll leave information down below in the description if you want to look into that get in getting your flock certified your flock tested i i just think i think it's beneficial to everyone to have that knowledge that your flock is clean disease free and it's just going to help everyone in the long run because it's going to reduce the spread of disease i just think it'd be beneficial to everyone honestly so i'll leave the details for that down below in the description if you want to in the meantime, you might notice I got a shovel. I got some trees to plant. All right. For Mother's Day, Davis and Leon got me some fruit trees. So we've got a Barbados cherry here, a Pakistani mulberry, which has these like really cool, really long mulberries on it. Then we've got a pomelo right here, which I'm really excited for. I've heard really amazing things about it. And then we've got a mandarin tree right here. Leon loves uh, mandarins. So I was like, we need, to have, we need to have a mandarin in our orchard. So here are four fruit trees. So I'm gonna see if I can actually get these planted today. I do have some good news and some unfortunate news. So good news. This is the apple tree that we transplanted and it doesn't look good, but I was checking and the leaves still have quite a bit of bend to them. And whenever I checked, there was green underneath. So there's a chance that this, it's going through its shock, but it might recover. So we'll see if it doesn't make it, we're not transplanting the other apple tree. We're actually going to leap where it's at will actually fit in place with where the chicken coop will be. So we thought it would be really cool. It'd be, I thought it'd be cute if we had um, an apple tree next to the chicken coop. So we're gonna leave that there. The unfortunate news is our Calamondin did not handle the transplant well, which if there was any trees that we lost, I'm, uh, I'm okay with it being the Calamondin because the Calamondin, it's a bitter orange. It's not something that you can just eat. It makes good lemonade, but we have a uh, Ponderosa lemon and um, and the kumquats as well, which I think are also a bitter. But as far as, uh, I mean, I guess you can use it for making a uh, chicken and such like that, but I was, I'm not as worried. It was a free tree and it sucks that we lost it, but if we were gonna lose any trees in the transplant, I'd rather it be that one that we lose.
One tree down, that's the mandarin tree. Just finished giving it a really good soak, good drink, now that it's transplanted. Also trying to just kind of like give the other fruit trees a little watering, a good little soaking. I'm gonna let this sit right here with the apple tree. Give it a good soak on the roots. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started planting these last three. So unfortunately my camera died, but I still wanted to kind of share with you guys everything now. I just finished planting the last fruit tree, <sighs> but it's dying. So you might've noticed I dropped a dead tree, the, the, the dead Calamondin in a spot. That is to mark the location of uh, the third fig tree that I've yet to transplant. So here, I'm excited for this and we've got what's called a custard apple. And we got this a while back. Um, the The scientific name is Anana reticulata. And I saw it online and it sounded absolutely amazing. I had to have it, took some digging, but I've managed to find it. So we got that, we have a custard apple. Then we've got uh, one of our two fig trees. This is the Olympian fig. And I can't remember quite what type of fig this was. I gotta go back and, cause it unfortunately lost the tag. But that's another fig. Then where the dead Calamondin is right here, that is where the third fig tree is gonna go. Then we've got our Barbados cherry tree that I got, gave it a really good watering. And then the um, Pakistani mulberry. And then of course the apple over there, which we're gonna probably get a third apple because we're gonna leave the apple tree over at the Silky's coop. But we're gonna have the apple tree there, another apple tree, and then this will be for our, we'll get some peaches, uh, maybe some plums, uh, but I kind of figured that this, this middle row would kind of be like the stone fruit kind of situation. I know apples technically aren't technically stone fruit, but we're just gonna roll with it. And then we've got the leaves. They started to recover but they're back to being yellow. So maybe you guys can, in the comments, I don't know if this is a, a magnesium deficiency or a new nitrogen deficiency, like yellow, like I know that leaves turn yellow when they get too much water. So whenever it, this lemon tree used to be over there where the flooding was, I figured that was why it was yellow. Now I'm wondering if there's actually more to it. So, I mean, there is a good shot of it and then just like you see the leaves they're they're yellow so maybe you guys can help me out with that i'm gonna try and look into that then we've got the uh this is the mandarin i believe yeah that's the mandarin tree and then the pomelo which i'm really excited about that one i'm excited for this or to get this orchard going. We've got quite a few trees now. We've gotten to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten trees in the orchard. We still have another, uh, we have the fig tree, which I actually counted in that one because it's gonna go right there. So I've got we've got the third fig tree, and then we also have the kumquat tree, which we need to transplant as well. That's gonna go in the citrus row. So I've kind of got a thing, I've got the citrus row, I've got the stone fruit, and then I've got the uh, berry and miscellaneous row. So I can't wait to see it all together. Like, oh my goodness, that's so exciting. Imagine having this, this orchard, just the whole, the whole expanse. And maybe down there at the very, very end, 
maybe down there we will uh maybe we'll have like a pumpkin patch 